the next step is to create two more tables. We're going to create a table for the category. We're going to create a table for products. Okay. Now, important step here. You want to control as much information going into a database as possible. So as an example, if you're on a form and you have name address, typically the state, the state and the country are pulled out menus. They do that because they don't want people making typos. So typically a pulled out menu is a good way to control the contents of your database. So whenever possible, have a pulled out menu to control the contents. So we're going to create a category table and that's going to be a pulled out menu for the products table. So as an example, the four categories we're going to have, we're going to have autos, planes, trains, boats, autos, planes, trains, boats. So let's create a category table. So we do this by coming over here and saying create table. Now it's going to say how many tables do you want to create here? Well, by default, you get, I'm sorry, how many fields do you want to create? By default, you get two. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom left and I'm going to say, okay, I want to create a category ID, a category name, and whether or not it's active or not. So I want to add one column. So here's three columns. So this will simply be called cat underscore ID. This will be a small integer similar to what we did before. <clears throat> this will be auto incremented and this is going to be a primary key. So category ID, small integer, primary key, auto incremented. This is going to be the category name. Category name will be variable characters up to say, let's do up to 75 characters. And this is going to be unique, which means similar to the email address inside the admin table, I don't want to have, excuse me, I don't want to have more than one category per table. So category autos, category boats. I don't want to have five boats. I want one boat, one auto, one plane, one train. So this category name inside the category table is going to be said to be unique. Then our active field. Oh, it's been an active field. Default value is going to be variable characters limited to either yes or no. So it's going to be a total of three characters. As the find, it's going to say yes. So by default, when I create a new record here, it's going to be active equals yes. So if this is done, now again, we talked about this before. <coughs> Excuse me. We talked about this before, but this I hit save. I don't hit go. If you would go right now, it's going to assume you want to add another column. That's not true. So we're going to simply hit save. Oh, we forgot to give the table a name. So we're going to call it cats underscore TBL. So cats underscore TBL and hit save. Okay, so there's our category table. So if I click here, here's the category table. Okay, now we're going to create the products table. So products underscore TBL. Now the products table, let's think about this. The products table is going to contain the product ID, the category name. Now if you want to put the date that the product was added, so let's do this again. We can say that this is going to be product ID, date it was created, the category name, the product name, the product price, and whether or not it's active. So a total of six fields. We're going to just keep this simple. Now we can put a skewed number, we can put a description field, we can put a photo of the product, etc., etc. My mistake, we're going to add one more field for price. So this is going to have a total of seven fields. So I already have two fields, two columns, so we're going to add five columns. Add five columns and hit go. Okay, so first column is going to be product underscore ID. This is going to be a small integer. This is going to be auto incremented. AI auto incremented. This is going to be primary key. 
Okay. Next is going to be date. Date that we enter the product. This is going to be a timestamp. Timestamp is going to have a default type of timestamp. Next field will be the cat name. Cat name, category name is going to be variable characters and it's going to be limited to 75 characters, similar to the category table. Okay. Next is product name. So product underscore name. This will be variable characters. This will be limited to say 120 characters and inside the products table, the product will be unique. The category is not unique inside the product table. I could have autos, autos BMW, autos Audi, autos Volkswagen. So if the category is not unique inside the products table. The category is unique inside the category table. So very important to understand that. So product based on these choices, product is going to be set to be unique because I don't want to have five products with the same name. So product price, we're going to say price. Now this is something we haven't done before. When doing a price here, the price is going to be a floating decimal point. So we're simply going to pick float. Float gives you two digits past the decimal point. So float for price is acceptable. Price float is two digits past the decimal point. So price and whether or not it's active or not. So we're going to say active. So I guess I made a mistake here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess I mentioned price. My mistake on that. Active equals variable character, three digits, default value as defined is going to be yes. So if this is correct, I should be able to come down here to the bottom and hit save. Now, notice it ignored the last field that didn't fill in. So what I have here is I have my admin table my category table, my products table. Now, to keep this simple here, we're going to populate the products table with a Dreamweaver form, okay? But the category table, we're only gonna have four categories, planes, trains, boats, and autos. So we can do that right from cPanel. So we're gonna select the category table, we're gonna go to insert, and we're gonna insert four records. So by default, we can insert two records. So we're going to click down here at the bottom. And there's no option for four. There's option for five. So we're just going to ignore the last field here. So we're going to put name up the category. So we're going to type in boats. Tap key. We're going to put in points. Tab key. We're going to put in trains, tap, 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 and autos. So those are the four categories that we're going to sell inside our products table. Again, the reason I'm doing this is we're going to have a pull down menu for the products table that comes from the category table. The category table is going to populate the products table. So if this is correct, I simply hit go. Okay. So if I go to the category table and I browse the category table, I can see that I now have four categories. Both is ID 1, planes, trains, autos, all set to yes. Okay, so later I'm going to show you a really cool thing here. So let's say I don't want to say we're in the middle of the winter here. We're not selling boats. We can set boats value to no. Therefore, it won't show up in my pull down menu. So let's go to Dreamweaver. Okay, so inside of Dreamweaver, inside of Dreamweaver, we're going to create forms to insert, insert products into the products table using a Dreamweaver form, totally built in Dreamweaver. We'll tackle that in our next video, so stay tuned.